Today I will walk you step by step through the installation and setup of a basic VPN connection with WireGuard. So keep watching. Hi everybody, welcome to The Digital Life. My name is Christian and I'm always teaching you how to become a real IT professional. So if you are interested in learning Linux, Python, networking, cloud and all those stuff, then don't forget to subscribe to my channel. WireGuard is a new and promising VPN protocol that was just recently added to the official Linux kernel from version 5.4 onwards. It tends to be much more simple and much more performant than other established VPN protocols. I also did recently a video where I compare WireGuard to OpenVPN and IPsec. If you haven't already watched it, I've put you a link in the description below. Check it out. Although WireGuard may not be enterprise ready yet, my personal opinion is that it will become much more important in the future and you can already use it in smaller projects or on private environments. I think it's time to get started with WireGuard. Let's try to install that on a Ubuntu 20.04 server and client and set up a basic VPN connection between those two systems. You can also find a client for Windows, for macOS, for Linux and also for mobile devices with iOS or Android. I've also put you a link to the official WireGuard documentation in the description below. Check it out if you want to know how to install that on different distributions or different operating systems. Okay, so let me share my screen with you guys and we will now set up the basic VPN connection with WireGuard. So let's go. To do a short demonstration, I have installed a virtual test environment with an Ubuntu 20.04 LTS server and also a client. So let's start with the installation of WireGuard on the server and on the client. And this is very easily since WireGuard has been integrated in the Linux kernel so you don't need to download and compile kernel modules anymore on Ubuntu. That is just done, we are installing it via the packet manager, just enter sudo apt install WireGuard. And it will just install WireGuard and the WireGuard tools that are necessary to easily manage the tunnel interfaces. Just enter yes. And it's just done, right? On the client we also need to do the same thing. So let's go to the client. Just do a sudo apt install WireGuard and enter yes. And that's it. We can just now create our tunnel interfaces and start configuring them. And we will start with creating private and public keys in order to establish a secured network connection. So when you are wondering what the hell is a private and a public key, don't worry, I will also make a video about how private and public keys are working. So once this video is finished, I will put you the link in the description below. Check it out, it will be very interesting. So WireGuard comes with some easy and simple tools to generate private and public keys. You can basically just do this in one command. To do that, just enter wg gen key this will generate a private key and output it on the console so we will pipe it to write this to a file private key and pipe this output again to the second command wg pub key so this will generate a corresponding public key out of the private key and we will also write this to a file public key so we can now see we have two files in our directory and we will now output the private key on the console. To do that just enter cut private key and this is our randomly generated private key. So be careful you must not share this private key with anyone else because with this private key the server is able to decrypt all network packets that are sent from the client. So this is a very sensitive information. Be careful when storing that file. Okay, we can now start configuring our interface. To do that, just create a new file with your favorite editor. I'm just using Vim the most time because I really like it, but you can just use any other editor you want to. And create a file in this directory, WireGuard, with the name wg0.conf. So this is the name of our tunnel interface. Let's enter it. And now we will start to configure our interface. Just enter interface 
And we will start with the private key of the server. Just paste the private key we have copied from the console. And we will enter an address here. We're using the private IP address range 10.0001 slash 8. You can use any other private IP address range if you want to. Make sure it's unique, so if you use the same private IP address range anywhere else, you will get rooting issues. And also enter save config and set it true. We now need to specify two commands, one that is post up and post down. I will just copy and paste them. So these are IB tables rules that will accept every packet on the tunnel interface and also forward outgoing interface of the tunnel interface and masquerade it with the public IP address of our server. So we also need to do the same on post down and just remove these entries. Just change dash A to dash D to delete those two rules. And now we also need to specify a listen port. Port. I'm using 51820. That is the standard port for WireGuard, but you can also choose any other port you want to. So let's write this file and exit the editor. And we will now start the network interface. To do that, just enter wg-quick up and then the name of the network interface. Just hit enter. And you can also check if everything was successful with the sudo wg. And you can see it's just created the interface wg0. You can also see it here in IP link that we now have created a tunnel interface. Now we can switch to the client and start configuring our client to connect with that server. And we will also start by generating those private and public keys on the client too. Just enter the same command wg gen key and pipe this to the private key file. Also pipe this to the wg pub key command to generate the corresponding public key and write this to a file. So we now have our two files here. We will again output the private key on the console and copy it. Now we start creating our WG0 interface on the client too. Just enter sudo in your favorite editor and create a new file in WireGuard WG0.conf. And now again we will start with an interface Add the private key we have just copied from the console and enter an IP address. We are using 10.0002 at the end with the same subnet mask. Save the configuration. And now we need to tell our client that it should connect to the server. To do that, just enter peer. And we now need to add the public key of the server's interface and copy the public key on that interface. This is this one here. Switch back to the client. Enter public key equal and paste it here. Now we need to enter the IP address of the server. To do that enter endpoint equal and then enter the public IP address of the server the client can connect to. I need to find out that because it's dynamically generated. So I will enter IP address and my server has this IP address here on port ETH0. So in your case when you're using a server that is available on the public internet that probably is not a private IP address but instead a public IP address. So I'm using a virtual test environment so therefore this is a private IP address. Switch back to the client and paste it here. We also need to specify the port 51820 and now we need to specify the allowed IP address. To do that just enter allowed IPs equal and you now need to decide do you want to route all traffic from the client to the tunnel or just specific traffic and route everything else through your default gateway because what WG Quick is doing. It's changing your default gateway once you enter all allowed IP addresses here. 
So in my case, I want to do that. I want to route all traffic from the client to the server and my server will actually forward that network traffic. To do that, just enter 0.0000 slash zero. So that will tell WireGuard, please route all traffic from the client through the tunnel, even if the destination is normal internet traffic. So when doing that, your server will need to forward that traffic. And there's a specific setting in Linux that you need to enable in order to make this working. But I will show this later. Let's just finish with this configuration. Write it to a file, exit, and then we will start the interface again. WG quick up WG zero. And you can see the client has now changed a default gateway to route all traffic through the tunnel interface. So let's check with sudo wg and you can see our interface is created, but it's not connected to the server yet. So that is because we first need to add the client on the server. So we actually need to tell the server, so this client is allowed to open a connection with you. And we do that by copying the public key of the client's interface here and switch back to the server. So on the server, there's an easy command to allow a client's connection. Just enter sudo wg set wg0 peer. Now you need to paste the public key of the client's interface. Allowed IPs. And now enter only the IP address of the client's tunnel interface. That's the two at the end slash 32. Enter. And now we can switch back to the client. But when we enter this command again, you can see there's nothing changed, right? And that is because WireGuard will only send traffic through the tunnel if it needs to. So if we are not sending out any traffic, nothing will happen and the tunnel will not be established. So there's another thing you need to consider too. When working with NAT devices or firewalls in between, WireGuard's architecture will send out packets on the UDP protocol, which is stateless. So there's no keep alive by default and that can cause issues with NAT firewalls or any other network device in between that needs to somehow track the connections because the client and the server are not consistently sending out network packets. So any gateway in between might just close the connection and WireGuard will not re-establish it again. So to overcome this issue, you can also specify a specific keep alive that will be sent from the client to the server. Just do that. So we first need to take down the interface because otherwise we can't change anything in the configuration file. So wg quick down wg zero. And the rules are now deleted. So we can now sudo vm edit our file. And we can now enter a keep alive packet at the end of this configuration file. Just enter persistent keep alive equal and now specify the seconds just enter something like 30 seconds that should be enough just write this exit and now we can establish the connection again w quick up wg zero so when we now enter wg again you can see our connection is just established by the keep alive packets automatically and we will send out a persistent keep alive to the server every 30 seconds. So that will remain the connection open when there are some gateways in between that could just close the connection because of timeout values or something else. So with this method, you can easily ensure the connection is always open. And just let's do a quick test if we can reach out to the server. Let's do a ping 10.0001. And you can see that's now working. So that's great. The packet are routed through the tunnel. We can now try to reach out to a public IP address on the internet. Let's just do a ping to the DNS server of Google. And we can see all oh, the packets are really working too. That's because I've just configured my server to forward any incoming packets on the tunnel interface. So you can check if your server is able to forward any network packets by doing cut slash proc sys slash net ipv4 ip underscore forward. So this should be one. If this is zero, you can simply change this to one. You just need to do a sudo 
sys ctl w and then net dot ipv4 dot ip underscore four ward equal one. So when you enter that and reboot the server, the server will now start forwarding all the network packets that are coming from the client to any other destination. You can also check if the client network packets are really going through the tunnel. Just enter the ping and we can now try to capture these network packets. We can simply just do a TCP dump on the WG0 interface. TCP dump dash ENVI WG0. So we will trace all network packets from this interface and just do a filtering on host 8.8.8. So we will see only the traffic that the destination auth source has this IP address. And you can see these are the network packets coming from the client reaching the tunnel interface of the server and they are forwarded to the internet. So that is working. So you can also configure this in different ways, of course. So when you want to specify on the client that not all traffic should be routed through the internet, you can basically just go back to the client and edit this configuration file and you need to change this entry here because when you just enter the IP address of the server or the IP address of that network, this will not change your default gateway. So you will send out traffic to the internet to your private router. But when you send traffic to these destinations specified here, only this traffic will be routed through the tunnel. So you can configure this in many different ways that depends on what your needs are and what your environment looks like. I think that is not too complicated because you, we are just using small and very easy configuration files. And overall, I think WireGuard is a very interesting and great technology. So I'm really excited about this. I'm excited to try it out in my private environments and do some more research on that as well. So I hope you liked this video. I hope you could learn something and I could show you some interesting stuff about WireGuard and VPN protocols. And if you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to hit the like button. You can also leave me a comment if you want me to do some more specific videos on Linux or networking or basically any other topic you are interested in. So thanks everybody for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. Take care of yourself and I see you soon.